The Dewey Beach Town Charter requires auditors to be independent of the town manager and mayor, reporting to the Audit Committee. But in 2018 and into 2019, both Koenig and Redifer pre-edited audit documents and defended TGM, including the mayor's approving payment of a huge bill. We estimate our fees for the Phase 1 services to range from $11,250 to $13,750. If significant additional time is necessary, we will discuss it with you and arrive at a new fee estimate before we incur the additional costs. We estimate our fees for the Phase 2 services to range from $12,500 to $15,000. If significant additional time is necessary, we will discuss it with you and arrive at a new fee estimate before we incur the additional costs. For an estimate range of $23,750 to $27,500, again requiring, per the Charter, audit committee approval of any fee amount above the cap of $27,500. The AUP, the, all phases of the AUP, which is phase one and phase two, was I think in the neighborhood of fifty-four, fifty-five thousand dollars The AUPR by TGM cost a total of $62,446, which is $34,946 above the cap allowed under the contract, more than double the $27,500 cap. No audit committee approval of the more than double the cap fee. Who approved it? Only the Mayor Redifer who is not authorized to approve bills on his own without council approval, and in this case, audit committee approval. Redifer's post-it note was the only approval found of this bill, discovered in a Freedom of Information Act by Dewey Citizens for Accountability. And I'm hearing that we're unhappy with TGM. What are we unhappy with? What, what have we heard? And I'm sitting back here, I've sat through watching this audit get approved year over year. No tell the problem. Yeah, Commissioner David Moskowitz, and I'm a CPA as well. Uh, I feel the current auditor, which is not up to par, he missed two off balance sheet accounts. Then, as a result, the town ended up spending 400 grand for our lawyer, lawyer uh, Walton to investigate that and other issues. So it wasn't just that. And then the town basically went to the auditor, did agreed upon procedures. They spent another 63,000. And from those reports, not much was done. So this is not related to the RFP, but to answer Debbie's question, there was an issue with the financial statement because I was an investment committee chair, and now Bill is going to be on the investment committee. But the investment committee manages 4.5 million for the, and the auditor thought he found an issue, but he misread the report. No one contacted the investment committee. There was like no communications. I go to the meeting. And then I basically find out there's questions, and it, it was stuff that he read the report wrong, and the T-bill was labeled as cash and stuff. So it was the auditor's mistake. Um, the accounts that you're mentioning that were not missed before, um, they were missed because they didn't know about them. And, there, if, and I think what you're saying is that they should have applied some tests or something to find those accounts. And for one reason or another, that didn't happen. But that's TGM, I believe, and, and, and those two accounts have nothing to do with the AUP either. Those two accounts have more to do with previous audits from the past. Uh, you're pointing a finger at TJ, TGM as the responsible party for How should a missing account be found? Audit committee question. Given the situation of TGM not finding the accounts, what would you have done to be able to prevent or help mitigate that? Answer from Auditor Cohn Resnick. Send out confirmations, the different departments that ask them, do you have other accounts? So we have seen over the years that sometimes department heads have other accounts. You can't do that, you know. We'll also question the bank. Are there any other accounts that they have? Questions the Dewey Citizens for Accountability and Residents asked in writing of TGM before TGM chose to resign. 
was the bartering of over $300,000 worth of equipment as covered in the Cape Gazette article regarding coastal towing or dirt works covered by TGM in any report? If so, which report? Is it the case that Dewey received over 2,600 items from the military surplus program, but TGM identified only 13? What is TGM's theory on where the other 99% of the equipment went? Is it true, as indicated in an email sent from a TGM employee, the mayor, town manager, and Larry Silver received advanced copies of the audit and military surplus report for them to revise? If so, what changes or edits did they make before it was seen by the town council, the audit committee, or public? DCA also demanded to know the reasons for the $34,994 billing over the approved cap of $27,500. TGM quit on February 19th, but it was not disclosed by Mr. Koning or Mr. Redderford to the Dewey residents until over 30 days later. When council approved a new auditor in June, town management then delayed signing the contract for two weeks. On went the delays and pushed back the audit until after voting had already begun for the election. The new firm's audit document was finally released by the town on Friday, September 13th almost a month after the Dewey Charter required deadline of August 15th. When questioned about the charter violation, the mayor and Mr. Bauer wrote that it was the fault of TGM's critics, mostly DCA. The audit detailed extensive and ongoing failures of internal controls and mismanagement in the town administration of Redifer and Koning. By the time that the audit was released, two full weeks of town vote by mail had occurred, with Mr. Redifer and Bauer on the ballot for re-election. No mention of the audit was made on the town's news page. Its Friday's release was after the newspaper's reporting deadlines, and the mayor rejected an effort to hold an emergency audit meeting the day after its release. The failure to meet the charter deadlines was a management failure which mirrors the others detailed by the independent audit. But will the Dewey voters find out enough to hold town management responsible in the election?